Bumber. Rad. I ain't afraid to work. I ain't afraid to play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life. Times like this. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you just what you can kiss. That's right. Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another Sawmill Sundays on the Stony Ridge. I've been slacking, it's my fault, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, folks have been calling me out. Hey man, what happened to Sawmill Sunday? What's going on? Well, what happened was it's been 100 degrees outside and I just don't have the uh, time and or the energy to run this machine out here in the hot sun in the 100 degree temperature. So soon we'll be building a sawmill shed and we'll be able to come in and mill all summer, all winter, all the time. However, for now, we just got to deal with the weather the way we deal with it. So what we're going to be doing today is running the Woodmiser LT40 extra wide. This is a beast of a sawmill. You'll see it in the uh, inner workings here in just a minute. And we're going to run these three logs through here. These are three wild cherry logs that I harvested from my friend Johnny's house. Johnny called me up and said, hey man, I got some tree guys here. They're cutting this giant wild cherry tree. Love to give it to you. So we loaded it up and today we're going to make beautiful live edge lumber from these three pieces of wild cherry. And this lumber will be used in the mega shop for tabletops, countertops, and all sorts of furniture projects. So come along as we fire up the Woodmiser LT40 and make ourselves some beautiful live edge lumber. These slabs will be worth anywhere from $200 to seven, $800 a piece once I get them done. So we're gonna make some money on the mill today. So before we get started, guys, welcome to the Stony Ridge Farm Channel. If this is your first time here, gosh, I'd love to have you back. Please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel. We are on a 150-acre first-generation farm project here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Let's show you the equipment we're going to be using today. We've got a little bit of uh, preventative maintenance that we have to do. So for our slabs, which is the bad part of the lumber that's coming off, we're going to throw them in the back of the Warlock dump truck. This is an aluminum bed dump truck. It's an old... Home Depot rental truck. It's got about 200,000 miles. This is the Woodmiser LT40. This is the LT40 extra wide. In other words, it'll take a 36 inch wide log and we're gonna need it for that big boy right there. It doesn't look that big, but wait till we get it on the mill. My ATV, this is a Honda Foreman 500. And right over here is where we'll be offloading our logs onto the pallet forks. This is a TYM. T574 hydrostatic cab tractor. Really nice, let's take a look inside. Really nice machine. I only have about 40 hours on this machine and I've been using it to help smooth out some of the rough spots on the farm and the driveway. So without further ado, we've got a little bit of maintenance that we're gonna have to do to the Woodmiser LT40. So a lot of uh, the lubrication on the Woodmiser is simply just taking a little bit of ATF, automatic transmission fluid, and lubricating uh, the chain and the rails. So there's a chain right up here that actuates to go up and down. In other words, raising the mill up and down. We have a chain that's right down here, and we have a rail right here. We've got a little bit of surface rust on that rail, and all I have here is just ATF in an old Myers soap container. I don't throw anything away, guys. So we'll just lubricate that all the way down. Try not to run off and drip and make a huge mess, best we can. So we'll go that way with that, and then we'll go back this way and we'll get our chain. Doesn't require a whole lot of lube, but it does require a little bit. That's all I'm gonna do right there. Okay, and then we'll go up top and we'll just put a little drip dribble on this chain right here. If you put too much on there, <laughs> you're gonna cause problems. Uh, this stays down here with the sawmill. We'll leave that. And then I've got a rag and I'll wipe everything down. And we always have to check the oil in this machine. So we'll pull this, make sure our oil is good. We're about due for our first change. It's totally full. Since we haven't started the machine, I don't need to wipe that off first, okay? There are a few lubrication points that we need to think about right here. Also, um, a lot of people don't do this, but I learned from a, uh, an experienced sawmill guy. I put a little dribble of ATF right here, tiny dribble right there, and a little dribble on that right there, on those wheels. And I also will put a little dribble right here, and a little dribble right there, and a little dribble on that rail, okay? 
all this stuff will get wiped down nice and clean. And all we're trying to do really is just make sure that everything gets well lubricated. Also prior to firing up the machine, we need to make sure we've got our soapy water. This is called the lube miser. The lube miser is basically soapy water. I'll take this little cap off and that lubricates the blade as it goes through the log. And there's controls for the lube miser right here. So we'll put it on pulse actually. And then when we push it forward, that drives the sawmill forward and it engages the lube miser. So in other words, that's what sprays our log. And there's a little spray nozzle right here. I'll just take you around and show you. A little spray nozzle right there, and that's constantly spraying. You'll probably get a little bit of that footage on as we run the mill. This has to be set to 3,000 PSI. So 2,800 to 3,000 PSI is our blade tension. Oh goodness, there we go. We'll bring it up to about 2,800, fire the mill up and we'll tighten it up just a little bit more. This is our hydraulic setup. The hydraulics are what roll, turn, twist, and get the log into position. So lots of stuff to know. This thing, the first time you use it, the first, second, third, fifth, sixth whatever however many times you use it it's like flying the space shuttle at first it just seems a little confusing but don't worry i'm gonna do it for you cool let's fire this puppy up get this log up here on the log deck all right turn it on my fuel pump engages fire this dude up make sure we're all in neutral and our uh blade is not engaged all these switches this is for debarker this turns on my blade this moves the mill inward and outward. This is the speed of the mill. This is up and down because you think when the blade goes down, it has to go down and cut. So we'll set that. And this is the simple set computer. We'll set it to, I'll show you, two and one sixteenth. And that's the thickness that we want. Okay. We'll put it on manual for now. Start her up. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> uh, it's always interesting to run that first cut, man. And I'll tell you guys, this is absolutely gorgeous. Let's get you a look at this wild cherry. Um, this is just a drywall mud knife right here, but this is the character that you're looking for. Wow, I can't wait to get the big one here. Let's pour a little water on this. This is what it's gonna look like with finish on it. Oh, look at that. Oh man, that is just absolutely gorgeous. Wow. So this is the money shot. This is the biggest, widest, 
uh, part of the log right here. We're gonna be flipping it and cutting more and more and more. And all of this will go for live edge because it's so big, there's really no use in using it for anything other than live edge lumber. So awesome guys. Countertops, tabletops, uh, butcher blocks, all sorts of stuff for this wild cherry. Wild cherry is a pretty hard lumber, a pretty tough lumber and very rot resistant. So one more look here. Wow. Once we get into something really pretty over here, I'll show you that. We'll show you guys the end result of how much lumber we actually get out of these logs. Very cool. As you can see, I'm tossing some of this stuff over in the slab pile. We'll utilize this, we'll burn these slabs out in the pasture and the cows will consume the ash and the charcoal and that's a natural dewormer for our cows. So we don't use any chemicals with our cows, we use the charcoal as a natural dewormer and some of this will go in the smoker because that's gonna make some awesome, awesome stuff on the grill. Let's get busy and wrap this up, man. Equipment failure, this little spray nozzle right here likes to clog up sometimes and it failed on me. Ah, there's a one hour setback I'm milling up 20 minutes worth of logs. Good to go. Sometimes when you're running really hard lumber like this, you have to change the blades out. So I had to change the blades between log number two and log number three. That's what I'm doing right here.
Folks, I am wearing hearing protection, just so you know. Uh, this is the last cut of the second log, and this is what you're looking for, a big knotty area. So let's, look at that, wow. Look at that. Here we go, the big show. Oh my goodness. Look at that, look at the grain. We got one more log to go. Man, this is big money lumber right here. This is really nice. Guys, let me know what you think. Hit that like button. Love to have you back here. Please subscribe to the channel. This isn't everything we do here on the farm. Box three in one forestry multi-tool. And this is how we roll our logs. This is a cant hook. Over we go. I'm on there. Woo -hoo -hoo. That's a big old log right there, guys. Ugh. Log ox. I'll post a link down in the video description to that critter. Super handy tool for a firewood guy or a sawmill guy. I'm gonna need a shower. <laughs> it's dusty and the wind is blowing the dust right back in my face. Ugh, I probably should have a mask on. This is the big show. This is the big log. This is the heart cut of the biggest log. And you get to see the reveal right here along with me. So let's go ahead and take this guy back. Oh my goodness, look at that. Wow, this one's gonna be even better. Hang on, hang tight. We'll go ahead and uh, pour a little agua, agua frio on there. Oh man, look at that guys. Awesome, beautiful character here, character there. All this will shine up really, really nice with some good bar top finish. We'll show you guys when we do it too, we'll build it. And Last but not least, and this thing got a little rot in the center, but that's what you want. That's your character in this wood. It's a little soft, but once we put the bar top finish on there, it'll look really, really good. So this is the heart cut of this. And you see, it's got a lot of heartwood and not a lot of sapwood. This is the sapwood. It's a whiter wood, a, a brighter color. And the heartwood is that deep, rich, cherry red look at that wow guys unbelievable unbelievable super happy to bring you here on the sawmill with me today sawmill sundays are back baby <laughs> thank you guys the cows are happy too i just heard them mooing for it that's gorgeous i've got probably three more cuts on this log and i'll have the pallet forks loaded down with all this tractor can handle it's about to lift the back wheels off the ground so i may have to take this put it in the barn before <laughs> i do any more work now i have a huge pile of live edge cherry wood uh, for projects in the new shop next we're gonna see we've got some red oak white oak white oak red oak lots of red oak maple poplar all sorts of stuff. This is a huge maple log right here. Man, can't wait, guys. So we'll see you next time on the next Sawmill Sundays here on the Stony Ridge Farm. Please jump in, subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you back here. Got 158 for your first generation farm and the cows are ready to move. Woo! <laughs>